a lot more energy tonight than you normally do on a Wednesday night. I mean, for real. I'm not just telling you that by faith. I mean, y'all got it. I'm seeing it. I'm feeling the vibes, the faith vibes. All right, you're already seated. Way to go. You're ready to start this movie. Did you already meet some new people? Did you already shake some hands? If you haven't, meet somebody around you, besides you. Say, hey, my name's Ashley. If your name is Ashley whatever your name is. Man, guys, I don't know what's going on with this air, but if I would have known it felt like that, I'd been wearing more deodorant and maybe y'all should have too. But I am sorry about that. It is kind of uh, spicy hot in here. Is it just me? Yeah, so I see some of y'all fanning. I know I'm not supposed to really state the obvious. It's not the most spiritual thing to do, but I just had to get it out there that the struggle is real. I'm gonna acknowledge what's going on, but we're gonna keep Moving, obviously, I don't know if it's all that sweat or whatever. I don't know if sweat releases like energy vibes, but you guys got it going on. What? A holy sweat. Everything's holy when you come to the church. We gotta spiritualize that sweat. All right. Well, <clears throat> Paul, he uh, asked me to preach tonight and um, amen. I'm, I'm thankful I said yes in Jesus' name. Um, if, you, uh, if you're like, hey, what are you saying up there? Where are you going with that? Instead of judging or walking out or falling asleep, just start to pray for me, all right? Just start to pray for me. That's what I do on the front row for Paul. When he starts off and I was like, where is he going? I just start praying in the Holy Spirit. And man, the Holy Spirit gets that guy back on track. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for you, babe. You're awesome. I love you. I love you. Thank you. All right. Well, some of you guys have met me, know me for a while. Some of you guys have uh, never known me. Maybe some of you here, I'm not going to limit you. Maybe you've never seen me before. I'm Ashley. I'm Paul's wife. I know this last weekend, I wore my glasses. And I'm like, I didn't recognize you. And I put them up like that. Oh, yeah. Hey, Ashley. Uh, yeah. And anyway, so I'm Paul's wife. Those of you watching online, hey, we're so glad that you tuned in online. But just to let you guys know a little bit about me, I actually, I grew up here at Victory. Actually, we first, we were going back and forth between, I know it kind of sounds crazy, but we were going back and forth between Victory and we were also going back and forth between uh, Mass, Catholic Mass, because we were trying to still be wanted by all of my dad's family and they uh, all are going to Catholic Church and Mass and, you know, want to be there for my grandma and everything, my grandma Hope. And <clears throat> anyway, so we were doing that back and forth. My mom would always say we we're spirit-filled Catholics. And so we, we would go back and forth for a while. And then we made the switch and we're, you know, here full time. And I didn't, and I went to VCS for uh, the majority of the time for a little bit. I went to Jinx and then went, came back to Victory Graduate. So I'd grown up in this amazing place. My parents, I didn't grow up in the church as far as like, I was here a lot, but I didn't grow up, you know, in the ministry like uh, the Doherty family and, um, you know, the Mike, Paul, uh, yeah, anyways, I'm not going to go there. Um, I didn't grow up singing out of the womb like their family did too. Uh, but anyways, my family, they're real, realtors. My mom and dad are real estate agents and they still are. And I'm very thankful for all the sacrifices they made to put me through Victory Christian School and even just the decision to come to church and make it a priority in our family. I'm thankful for that. Uh, my first job at Victory was working the cafe over at the other building. And so never just my small beginnings. And um, then I moved to Mr. Goodsense and then I worked at a donut store and then the Lord brought me back to the church. So he had to take me around and, you know, eat some glazed donuts first and then come back. Um, and then I got more involved, came on staff as the youth, uh, helping with our youth department and then... Okay, and you want to tell my story? <laughs> I just get it. I'm glad. I love, I love it. Pastor Sharon and I, we are the peanut gallery on the front row. We, we make sure Paul remembers all his details of his story. But I went to Victory Bible College, and uh, yeah, awesome, loved it, and incredible time. Did the internship at Victory Loved that. Yeah, come on, interns. Did three years of that. And yeah, then God led me to come on staff as the, uh, you know, administrative assistant for youth and then moved into young adults. And then after that, 
uh, moved into this type of stuff. So praise the Lord. I just keep saying yes to what God is uh, doing. I have not felt ready for all those seasons, but if we feel ready for all the seasons that God has called us uh, to do, we've been waiting for a long time before we step out and do. And so that's some of the stuff that I'm going to be talking to you guys about tonight. But I believe that God has a specific agenda tonight. I believe that God has given me a specific word for those of you who are here tonight, for those of you who are watching online Actually, to get technical about it, God has given me three specific words to tell you and then, a, and then a whole lot of sermon to go along with that. But those words are just do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, just do it. Some of you guys took that as a sign to go and buy those new Nikes that you've been looking at. You know what? I'm not going to limit God if that's a sign. I don't know. But I like Nikes too. Anyways, but God says just do do it. I'm going to pray. Lord, help me tonight to articulate what you want to speak to every person here, God. I thank you, Lord, that every person here is not here on accident, Lord, but we are here on purpose. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, that we do not gather tonight out of obligation, Father God, or because we have to, Lord. But I thank you that tonight, Lord God, that we gather tonight out of a privilege, Lord God, to come together and worship you and lift your name up, Lord God. Be glorified tonight. I thank you for every heart open and ready to receive what you have in store. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Well, how many of you guys are familiar with the term procrastination? Yes? Okay, some of you guys are a little bit too familiar with that term. That's okay. That's why you're here tonight, and that's why I'm preaching to you. Um, I definitely, there have been times in my life where I procrastinated, and honestly, I have thrived on procrastination. I've waited to the last minute, and because I've waited on the last, to the last minute, man, I get this like extra momentum to get it done, and it's awesome, and it turns out better than I, maybe if I planned way in advance. But then most of the time, when I procrastinate, it doesn't do so good. Okay, like one thing I'm working on a lot is, Sometimes, um, uh, like today, I was reminded of my procrastination problem when I went to the sink and turned on the water and nothing came out. I forgot to pay the water bill. And uh, that's procrastination. And... <clears throat> Uh, Paul said, hey, also, while you're at it, uh, Sprint let me know that are we going to pay our bill. Honestly, I forgot it. And so today when I was supposed to be preparing the sermons, I was getting water people back and paying for Sprint. Bill. That is procrastination gone wrong. Well, <clears throat> you know, I believe that God has spoken some specific things in this 2016 year to me and to every single one of you guys here. And my purpose tonight and the thing that I need your help doing tonight is to think about and reflect on some of those things that God has spoken to you about this year. It might cause you maybe to um, think about back in January, some different series we, we had, maybe this, uh, look back through your journals and your phone, maybe just think about what are some things that God spoke to me about doing in year 2016. What are some goals that I wrote down? What were some accomplishments that I wanted to see happen? Because here's where, here's where we're at. I think God, I know God, he's, he's, he's thinking ahead like he always does. And he's saying, hey, guys, it's October. I know you love all the pumpkins. I know you love all the fall festivals, the fair, the funnel cake, the pumpkin spice lattes, the costumes and the candy. That's all great. But you know what October means? October means that we're three months away from stepping into a new year. Less than three months away from stepping into a new year. 
And I think God could be saying, you know what? I remember last year when it was New Year's Eve and you came down to the altar, you were at that party or whatever you're doing, you're at your journal and you were thinking and you were wanting to get excited about the new things that God had for you in 2016 uh, and write those goals, but then you kept getting discouraged about all the things that you didn't do in 2015, so you couldn't write it down. And I think he's saying, okay, you know what? I'm bringing it back to your forefront. That way when we get to New Year's Eve uh, this year that we're going to be able to see and you're going to be able to see that you were able to accomplish and you were able to uh, step into some of these things that you knew that you were supposed to step into. And tonight, honestly, my goal, the thing that I feel like that God has assigned me to do tonight is to ask you to think about those things. And that if you did not have goals or accomplishments going into this, uh, this new year, that tonight is a great time to get some. And if we forget or we don't know what goals to start, start by reading your Bible. There's a lot of goals in there. There's a lot of accomplishments I need to keep uh, doing inside the Bible. But no matter where we're going to be at a New Year's Eve this year, I know it's kind of an interesting thing that we're already thinking forward but I think that's because God's thinking forward. I think he's trying to say, hey, again, I know how you, how you had to walk through some stuff and some emotions where you feel like you missed it last year. Hey, let's not repeat that this year. But no matter what your New Year's Eve looks like, no matter what this year has looked like, the awesome thing is, is that God is gonna love us no matter what. God's gonna love us no matter what. His plans for us never change. He always wants good things for us. No matter where you end up, December 31st, is there 31 days in December? Okay, 31 days in December, no matter where you end up, this December 31st, 2016, no matter what's going on this year, no matter what you did or didn't do, God is still gonna love you. Nothing can separate you from his love. Amen. Now that's good news. But here's the reality, church. Sometimes we use that reality of God's love as an excuse to stay where we're at. Instead, as what God's love is intended to be, an empowerment to get us where we need to be. And tonight, Tonight, I believe that God's love is gonna give us the courage and the strength to confront some realities in our life. And like I said, we can either use his love as an excuse to keep us where we're at, or we can use his love as an empowerment to do the things that God has spoken for us to do. God gave me a specific word for some of you here. Not this may not be for all of you, but I believe God, God told me, he said, Ashley, there are some people that are coming tonight or watching online that have been feeling like they are going backwards or that they're on the verge of going backwards. And God said, the reason why you're going backwards is because you haven't said yes to the things that I want to use to move you forward. You feel stuck. You feel like you're about to go backwards. Things are moving, but it's, it's caught up with you now. There's things that God has spoken us to do, or there's good ideas that we really need to do. That honestly, we can, it can linger for so long. It can sit there for so long. But there comes a time where it kind of catches up with us. And if we're not, y'all know that feeling that it's like, man, okay, I've been doing everything else. But then this other thing that's kind of lingering. And now because I'm not doing it, I really feel like I'm starting to move backwards. Well, God is not a backwards God. He's a forwards God forward God and he wants to bring forth new things on the inside of you. He wants you to get unstuck. He wants you to experience the things that God, that he has planned in, in advance for you to do and for you to continue to do this year, these next three months. He either wants to start you getting in the right direction, initiate 
Some of you guys here, you have already, man, you've been accomplishing goals. You've been at it. You've been doing things that God has called you to do. And I want to say, good job. Way to go. That's encouraging. You should feel encouraged. But encourage some other people along the way. Don't just get to the finish line and be like, yeah, look what I did. Bring some people that are struggling and bring them with you. There's always a way to bring some other people along with you. But for those who have gotten distracted a little bit, like today, man, I was preparing my sermon and I was writing stuff down on the Word document, but my internet was up too because I was looking up some scriptures. I don't know how they know your browsing history, but overstock.com on the left kept calling my name. And I was like, I'm not gonna lie. There was one I was like, oh, that's cute. And I clicked on, I was like, no, easily distracted. Hand me the squirrel. Come back over here and focus on the word. So I don't know who, who you've been, what is distracting you. I don't know if you've been distracted, but for those who have that need a little pep talk, that need a little pep talk to finish strong, that need a little kick in the rear, start moving direction, God's word for you tonight is just do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, just do it. One of those things that, and again, I'm looking at my notes. Preachers got to look at their notes. Sometimes they don't go for you, but I do. I got to keep on track. It doesn't mean it's not in my heart. It's in there. Uh, one of those things that God has been wanting me uh, to say yes to is honestly tonight. And again, I'm sorry if I'm yelling. I forget that I have a microphone. I actually don't need to yell. Uh, but anyways, uh, one of the things that God has been wanting me to say yes to is tonight. You know, I've kind of, of speaking a, a full sermon uh, here at main service. And you know, honestly, I've done, yes, I've done transition. Uh, that's an in-word term. Basically, the prayer out of the worship time. And I've done offering, and I've tag-teamed with Paul. And honestly, uh, I've preached before. I've preached full sermons. And honestly, I'm not, I'm not a timid person. Um, you know, some of, some of you guys have told me before, oh, man, uh, you, uh, you were really shy. Now you're getting bold. I was like, I just, I just let you believe that, but I've never been shy in my life. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, I'm not a timid person. I love to talk. I love to talk about Jesus. I love to talk about the Word of God. I love y'all. I love people experiencing the truth of God's word. But for tonight, honestly, and for what this represents, just sharing a whole sermon, honestly, it scared the heebie-jeebies out of me for multiple reasons. And honestly, I don't know every reason or, um, you know, some of you guys, like, I can analyze you. I can tell you why you're afraid. I have sought the Lord, and I have um, asked in some things because I have, I have known that you, you know some things that you're called to step in and do it, but that doesn't mean that you're not afraid to do it. And that doesn't mean you don't always feel like doing it, but I've gone to God and I've, I've asked myself some hard questions and I've confronted some realities in my life through the grace and the help and, and the help of God. I even tried to ask Paul some stuff and he was like, I don't know, ask your counselor. And I was like, all right. Uh, no, he gave me some good thoughts. He gave me some good thoughts. Um, <clears throat> anyways, but the truth is, is that you come to a point where the things that God is asking you to just do, that you come to a point where you're either gonna rely on Jesus or you're gonna run from Jesus. And I wanna be a part of the group that relies on Jesus. And tonight, honestly, that's what I'm doing. I am relying on Jesus. And again, I don't know, I'm, I've, I've asked God, Lord, and I've gone in the presence of God, and honestly, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that he has um, revealed some different areas in my heart because what happens is we feel like God is asking us to do something or speaking something specific or a goal or something he wants to accomplish. And what we do is we just look at it and we say, no, and we just kind of live life and kind of go on to the next. We ignore it or we linger it. Or we're, just no, we're just a little apprehensive about it. Instead, honestly, you know what? Invite God along that journey of invite God and saying, you know what? 
God, you've asking me to do this. These are the things I've called you. These are some goals. Lord, what is causing me to get stuck? Invite, you know, he is such a good God. He's gonna show you and lead you on that journey and reveal some things about you that you did not even know existed on the inside of you because he loves you. And so tonight, I believe that God wants us to reflect on our year this year, 2016, and take an honest evaluation of where we're at and where we need to be. What do you keep thinking about doing that you haven't done yet? What closet do you need to clean out that you haven't done yet? Amen. My car, that's one thing that I need to do and stop procrastinating about but there's just a lot of Cheerios. And now there is dog food in there because I tried to take dog food in my house by myself and it ripped. And honestly, I have yet to clean all that out. There's a little, anyways, that's disgusting and gross. That's why I'm preaching to myself tonight. Tonight, you need to identify those things and ask God to shed some light on why you have it. What are some goals that you have written down this year that you haven't started on yet? Or what are some goals that you haven't, that you have started, but you've actually gave up on? You may not accomplish them all at the end of this year, but I believe that you're going to want to be farther than you are right now at the end of this year. And so what, what do I, what do, again, why am I sharing this? I believe that it's on God's heart to say, hey, there are some things in your life that I need you to do, some things I want you to accomplish, some things that I've spoken for you to do that you haven't done yet. And in doing that, I'm gonna move you forward and I'm gonna help you finish strong. You know, this last uh, uh, January, uh, we had a series, Taking Ground. Paul, you guys remember that series? I thought that was a powerful series. Well, not enough people raised their hand. I think it was powerful, babe. Um, anyways, so I, uh, these last couple years, though, I just feel like I've just been trying to find my feet. Um, I just feel like it's been one thing after a, another. Um, <clears throat> you know, after uh, we had our little first baby, then six months later, we stepped into the lead position here, and then I was just trying to figure out how to do that, what does that look like, my passion for the local church, now I have this baby, and discovering all the joys of being a mom, and I loved it, and then, you know, 10 months later, then uh, getting pregnant with our other baby, and we planned, uh, we wanted them to be uh, that close together, but, you know, obviously, um, there's a lot of things that come with that, but, <clears throat> um, you know, after that, and just, just trying to find myself, you know, when you're a mom, for all the moms in the room, I mean, it just changes things when you first start having kids and what to do with all your other desires, and I was just trying to figure out some things, and honestly, uh, when people are like, yeah, you guys are young, do you know what you're doing? Yeah, we're young, braver is, you know, instead of trying to convince you all this other stuff. But <clears throat> anyway, so we're just trying to figure out life. I just felt like God kind of showed me um, just a season of my life was just, I felt like if you've ever been um, body surfing or whatever in the ocean and the waves just keep taking you in different direction, I honestly, like, and you're trying to find your feet. That's what I felt like I was trying to do. And I felt like this year God spoke to me that it was to be a year of routine and order, that I needed some disciplines in my life. And to be honest, self-discipline is really hard for me to practice. It is really hard for me to stay with one thing forever. In fact, even thinking about staying with one specific discipline forever sometimes exhausts me and I already feel like a failure because the word forever is right there. It's just intimidating. That's why I'm thankful that God's grace is for today and, <clears throat> and not for tomorrow, but I can receive his grace for today. And so, you know, so honestly, during that season or during that series, Paul was talking about taking ground. God, Paul was talking about if you want to take ground, you got to write it down. And honestly, you hear, you know, 
going to VB, uh, Victor Bible College, being in church, different things. You hear statistics on how much more you're likely to accomplish goals when you write it down. But the reality is, is we hear that statistic, um, but normally we don't write it down. And somehow we think we're going to accomplish all these goals. Well, <clears throat> I think we're going to be the exception. And honestly, even writing goals, honestly, would freak me out sometimes because I'm like, okay, if I write three goals, it's not enough. But then if I write 15 or 20 goals, then I just feel overwhelmed. Where do I start? But honestly, I felt like, you know what, doing like, what do I need to do with that thought process, you know, of, okay, it's a little overwhelming and uh, I don't know what to write down. I just need to do it. I just need to write it down. I just need to start with something. And so anyways, I started writing things down and I didn't write it on a piece of paper. I write it on a piece of paper and then I forget about the piece of paper and then I put it on my phone, but there's too many notes. So I don't know where to go. And I was like, you know what, man, if I could just have it in front of me all the time. Okay, we'll just do it. Have it in front of you all the time. So I got one of Liam's bath crowns and I put, you may not be able to see all of it. Um, and it's okay. It's the main point. Okay. Yeah. So I wrote take ground. This was in January, uh, at the end of January. And I wrote, take ground. And honestly, for the longest time, that's all I wrote down. I did not know. I said, God, this is my first step to take ground. I don't know where you want me to take ground in, but this is my first step. I'm just going to do it. And so one of the things I wanted to take ground in is our home. And I felt like, how are you going to take better ground than praying more in your home? Taking ground by praying. I felt like these were things that God spoke to me to do. You got to get up close and personal in my bathroom right there. My mind and my body. You know, I start with my mind and my body. Honestly, I was so tired. There was, I, I still have mind games. We still have to, uh, you know, take captive thoughts that do not glorify God. But honestly, in 2015, I honestly, I just felt like my mind, I just feel like I was not strong enough in my mind to take hold of some thoughts. And honestly, I did not feel like that was life to the fullest. And I made up my mind, I'm going to live life to the fullest in 2016. And so part of that is taking, y'all put that back up. Part of that is taking ground in my mind. And one of the ways in my mind and my body, and one of the ways in doing that is word and work out. I feel like those were things that I needed to do. And here's the thing. I didn't start all this January 1st because I was like, you know what? I'm going to jinx myself. I'm going to join a gym January 31st to see if it works out. And it did. It did. I tricked myself, and it did. I've been doing that. Okay, <clears throat> as a mom, my goal, intentional and present. Honestly, this may look extremely simple to you, but this was really tough for me to really narrow down things that I feel like I wanted to grow in. Because honestly, I wanted to grow in everything. Because what do you do? I want to be a better reader. I want to read 10 books. I want to finish a book. You know, like you think there's so many things you want to grow in and you want to, and you want to do. But I honestly, and honestly, this was over a month's a period of time. It was not all of a sudden. I'm taking you somewhere. Hang in there with me. So as a mom, intentional and present. Those were the things that I want to do. You know what? The reason why as a wife, it doesn't mean it's my last priority. It just means that it was the really hard to narrow down what I needed to do as a wife because I needed to be a better uh, wife to Pa. I wanted to grow in my love for him. I mean, it's hard. You feel like you go from servant to servant and one thing, other servant, and you don't want your husband to get the leftovers, but to be honest, sometimes I do. Lord, help us. And so anyways, I put focus on my part, you know, instead of blaming him for everything. Focus on my part. Don't assign motives, you know. Just because he forgets something doesn't mean he doesn't care. That's a Finding a motive, you know, uh, loving as Christ does. So these are some. The point is not the specific things. If you don't have, if you don't have uh, goals, you can copy mine. That's all right. But <clears throat> my point is, is that honestly, this God has called us to take ground this year, these last three months. If you are not seeing progress in your life right now in October, now is the time to wake up and just do it. You know, 
I, and through these goals, honestly, God has opened my more desires on the inside of me. And I can honestly say, I've had so, it doesn't mean that I make those all the time. It doesn't mean that I don't miss those, but I'm telling you, God has been so faithful to produce movement in life and freedom in my life because I'm moving. (laughs) And honestly, you know, even with uh, uh, working out, some of you are like, oh, that's easy for you. You're small. You do that. No, it is not easy for me. And I know Paul and I were saying that we were uh, training for a half marathon. Every time I start to run, I have to tell as soon as I put on my tennis shoes, I have to tell myself to not quit. I mean, it is tough. I just did track in high school. It is tough to, to, to do these things. But honestly, you know what's keeping me moving forward is honestly out of fear of moving backwards. I don't want to move backwards. I want to move forward. So if the only motivation that I have is to not move backwards, I'm going to use that motivation to just do it. And I don't know what your motivation is. God only knows, but you don't have to. I'm telling you, sometimes we over-spiritualize and we put a lot of pressure on God to do something when he is waiting for us to just do it. He is waiting to use what we have in our hands to just do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, just do it. So what did you set out to accomplish this year? Is it in, that you need to just do? Is it you wanted to be a better giver? Man, start finding a way to give more. Is it, man, I've been wanting to spend more time with my kids. I want to make my family more of a priority. Make it a priority. If it's you want to start running, you want to start exercising, get out and walk five minutes, run five minutes, walk... You know what? When I started back running again, I seriously cramped. My side cramp was like there for the first month. It was awful. Um, But the Lord helped me press through. Is it to be better with your money? Are you needing to save more money? You need to practice stewardship. What have you done with that goal? Is it just a desire or is it reality? Have you signed up for a Dave Ramsey class? If it is a goal in your heart and a desire, then God, and that's a growing desire, God is gonna give the resources and the ability for that goal to happen. I think about Ross down here, deciding to go back to school. That is a desire that God has put in his heart and something that God has told him to do. And he had, whatever obstacles he had to press through, we all have obstacles when God asks us to do something, but we just gotta just do it. Was your, one of your goals and your accomplishments to really go deep in your relationships and your friendships? Okay, well, when's the last time you really went to a connect group and started talking to them about really what you're going through? Because if you're just going to talk shallow, then you're going to just have shallow relationships. And you're going to be getting all mad about everybody else having great friendships and getting stuck on the lonely boat. And you're just like, oh, well, put it for me. But you're not putting yourself out there to have the depth of relationships that you want. Is it because you want to grow closer to God? You want to start serving? You wanted to get more involved? Have you started serving? Or have you gotten distracted like I was today looking at overstock.com? What are the accomplishments? What is my goal? What is my agenda tonight? God wants, I'm reminding you, God wants to bring back to your forefront whatever you've been thinking about or whatever you've been bearing that you haven't wanted to do, God is saying, say yes. God is saying, just do it, amen? Amen. You want to start praying more. Have you showed up at a prayer thing yet? Have you showed up at a prayer? Have you, have you put a timer on your phone and say, you know what, I'm going to start with five minutes? You know, I think that's a really practical thing to do. Put your timer on. Say, you know what, for five minutes, I'm just going to pray straight. And then let that grow. What are you doing and moving forward with the goals and accomplishments that you have in your heart to do? The point is, is that what do you need to add to your life or give up that's going to give you a running start in 2017 and make it a priority? And again, sometimes it can be really overwhelming 
But you know what? That's the tactic of the devil. He wants you to get so overwhelmed and so worked up about all the stuff that you have to do that you don't do anything. Like when I go to the mailbox, I get extremely overwhelmed. I hate opening up mail. But how many times is it packed, you know, honestly, it's piled up and it's piled up and I've missed some birthday cash that I could have used a while ago or uh, now I'm paying fees because I forgot to do that. You know, you've got to step up and just do it. Start one at a time. You know, God is a God about action. He is a God about us doing something. And before I get into Matthew 25, where I want to where I want to take us and end up in, I want to uh, reference just a couple scriptures to help prove this point. James 1:22. If you just listen to the word and do nothing, you're deceiving yourself. Proverbs 21:25. He says, "People who just have a desire are lazy." So you can have all the great desires to change all you want, but are you doing something? In that scripture, it says, despite their desires, their, the lazy will come to run, for their hands refuse to work. Luke 6, 46 through 49, he talks about the difference of a person who listens to the word and puts it into practice versus a person who just hears the word and doesn't do anything about it. God is a God about action. He's about giving us something and us doing something with it. In Matthew 25, if you wanna uh, uh, turn there, Matthew 25, 14 through 18, uh, Jesus is on a roll teaching his disciples about what the kingdom of God is like. He just got done talking about the 10 bridesmaids, about being ready, being prepared. And then he starts talking about a story about investment, a story about action. It says Matthew 25 in the message translation, it's also like a man, the kingdom of God is also like a man going off on an extended trip. Basically, he went away, uh, the boss went away for a long time and he had three workers and he said, you know what, I'm gonna give you some money, I'm gonna give you some money and I'm gonna give you some money. And he said, and he gave all different types of amounts and he sa it, says, it says in there, he said he gave them the amount according to their abilities. So he knew their ability and he gave them different amounts. One of them went away immediately. He says he went right off and he did something with it and he doubled it. Then the second one, he did something with it and he doubled it. And then the third one, what did he do? That's what I wanna get to. The third one, he said, and he congratulated all those guys. And the servant with the uh, 2,000, I don't know. Okay, the third one, the servant gave him 1,000 said, Master, I know you have high standards and hate careless ways that you demand the best and make no allowances for error. I was afraid I might disappoint you. So I found, don't worry, I found a good hiding place and secured your money. Here it is, safe and sound to the last cent. Honestly, the saddest part to me about that is he had convinced himself that he was doing the right thing. I mean, I can just, I don't know how you read this part, but I read it like, okay, I did all the right things. I hit it. I didn't want to disappoint you. And so here's what you got. He said, the master was furious. That's a terrible way to live. It's criminal to live cautiously like that. If you knew I was after the best, why did you do less than the least? The least you could have done would have been to invest the sum with the bankers where at least I would have gotten a little interest. Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most and get rid of this play it safe who won't go out on a limb, throw him in to the utter darkness. Well, you see where that destiny led. So this last guy had so many things going on. One, he thought he knew his boss. Obviously, he didn't. And then he tried to blame his boss for doing nothing by saying, oh, you just have really high standards, so I didn't do anything. And then he was afraid of failure. He was afraid of coming in too short. Honestly, he kept making excuses. And his excuses caused him to cozy up with comfort. His excuses caused him to cozy up with complacent. If you are complacent, if you are stuck, I would highly encourage you to think about what excuses you keep making about doing the thing that you know that you need to do. Whatever it may be, I'm not gonna limit what it could be the smallest thing that God is asking you to do. It could be the biggest thing. It could be forgiveness. It could be giving something that you felt like you were supposed to give, but you haven't given it. 
It could be, like I said, forgiving somebody. You with, you've been withholding your forgiveness and you need to give that to them. What are the things? It could be a phone call to make something right. It could be you've been seeing something in your company that's not right and God's called you to step out and speak out and do something. The reality is that there are things that God has given us that he wants us to do something with. Time, abilities, desires. You know, he wants you to do something with those great desires that are birthed right here in church. He wants us to do something with those. And some specific things that he's asked you to do something with. If you hit it, if you're hiding it like this last guy in the story, tonight, dig it up. Dig up whatever you've been hiding, whatever thought has been lingering, whatever goal that you've been intimidated by, whatever thing that's been going on in your mind that you feel like you need to start doing. Confront the excuses and the reasons why you have been procrastinating with what God has spoken to you to do. And I'm gonna wrap up, amen. I'm gonna wrap up quickly with reasons of how we just do it. It's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? Just do it. Yeah, it's a lot easier for it to come out of your mouth than you actually do it. I think one of the things is honestly, I mean, it's ABC. It should be to us as Christians, but how many times do we really miss it? Number one is really experiencing God's love. Letting him love you every single day. You know, I know we've talked about this scripture a lot, but honestly, I just, I can't get it out of my mind. But Ephesians 3.17, this, this is how we experience God's love. We experience God's love by trusting in him. Taking him at his word. Actually believing what you're reading. If we really believe what we're reading about who God says we can be and what he says we can do, then we would definitely be leading the world when it comes to people of action because we really believe what he says about us. Letting him love you every day, making his home in our heart. And when we do that, his love goes deep in our hearts. And what does it do? It keeps us strong. It gives you strength. It gives you strength to just do it by letting him love you, by taking him at his word of what he says about you and the plans he has for you. Number two, we talked about this, using God's love. Yes, using God's love. We all do it. Are you using it as an excuse to stay where you're at or are you using it as an empowerment for what it's meant to do? Because if we really are letting him love us every day, you know what, when we see those goals, when we see and, and we're reminded of those things that God has spoken to us to do, it's his love that empowers us to confront those fears. If you're not able to confront those fears and those things that God spoke to you out of shame and guilt, you don't, you're not letting God love you. You're not doing number one. You're not experiencing God's love. And what, so we use his love to confront fears, excuses, insecurities, reasons why we aren't stepping out and doing what he's asked us to do. And number three, be your best encourager. To just do it, be your best encourager. Don't delegate the responsibility for people to keep you motivated. Don't delegate the responsibility to the church or your group leader or Paul or myself or Pastor Sharon or whoever. Don't delegate the responsibility to keep you motivated. Be your best encourager. When you feel like you've missed it as a mom, be your best encourager. When you feel like you've missed it at your work, be your best encourager. And just like you've talked yourself into feeling defeated, talk yourself out of feeling defeated by speaking the word of God. If you're going to just do it, you got to be your best encourager. Like I said, when I'm running, again, it is not an easy thing for me to do. I am encouraging myself the whole way. You can do it. Do not stop. You can do it. Do not stop. 
today as I was preparing for the ser- sermon or the other things that God has spoken to me. The Lord has anointed me and he has appointed me. God, you have called me. I belong here. You have got to be your best encourager. Here's the deal. God uses people to encourage us and I'm thankful for that encouragement. We need each other to stir each other up. But honestly, if we delegate that responsibility to a lot of other people, we're going to miss. We're going to miss moving forward and just doing it because when it's all said and done, you're not always going to have the cheerleaders and you're not always going to, some person is not going to say the exact right thing to keep you going. But you know the things that you need to speak to yourself to get you going. Be your best encourager. You know, a couple weeks ago, I shared at offering time, I shared about how uh, Liam was wanting a bike. And I said, okay, Liam, well, let's ask Jesus. Let's ask him. So every other day, uh, we would say, I would say, Liam, have you thanked Jesus for your bike? What are you asking Jesus for? He said, a bike. Where's my bike? Well, you know what? We're thanking Jesus for it. God has got, he's, Jesus has got a good gift for you. It's a great bike. Well, you know what? A couple weeks ago, uh, a friend, uh, some friends of ours, they, they didn't hear that story, but they had forgotten that actually, or they had bought it a while back but hadn't had the opportunity to bring it to the house yet. And he got his bike a couple weeks ago. And it was awesome. And when I woke him up that morning, I said, hey, Liam, what have you been asking Jesus? What have you been, there, 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 there. What have you been asking Jesus for? He goes, a bike. And I said, yes. And I said, we're going to go get it. We're going to put it together. That's the thing. I'm going to be more specific next time when I pray. I'm going to pray for a bike that's already put together. Because I had the box. And I'm telling you, it was really, as I opened that box, I was like, dear Lord, I hate putting things together. And then I kept every part I pulled out. Honestly, defeat. You cannot do this. This is not going to work. Call Lifeline. Call your dad. Call babysitter. Call Paul. Wait for Paul. I mean, he was so excited about his bike, though. And I was just like, oh my gosh, seriously, how am I going to do this? So I honestly, by faith, I was like undoing the packages and I was starting to read the instructions. And you know those instructions? I'm the person I'm like reading in my mind, but reading in my mind, I don't get enough. I got to read out loud multiple, multiple times. So I kept doing that. And then I started over. And then, uh, because I messed it up, and then I talked myself into, I'm serious, it's a big deal. I was like, you are a creative genius, you can do this, God has given you the mind of Christ, you can do this, Ashley. So finally, I made up my mind, I was not going to give up, and I was going to do it. And I, and again, like I said, I hated putting things together. But finally, I decided I was just going to do it. And sure enough, obviously, that bike was not lifelined or delegated out. I put that bike together and we experienced an awesome little ride. Amen. My point in saying that is that honestly, just do it. That's a little example. But you could be hearing goals or you could be thinking about all the stuff that you haven't done yet that you need to do in these last next three months. And so just like I was pulling out of the box and getting overwhelmed by each piece. Don't let the overwhelming thought and the anxiety of where you haven't missed it or where you have missed it keep you from just doing it, from starting somewhere, from doing something. Decide that you are going to do it. Decide that you are going to say yes and trust God along the way. I don't know the specifics of things on your heart right now, but God does. And honestly, if you're honest with yourself, you do too. And I know some of you guys, maybe, maybe you're just killing the game. You're doing awesome. You are just crossing those goals off. You are accomplishing different things. Well, I would encourage you to ask God, God, what else do you want me to accomplish this year? What are some other things that you want me to do? What are some things that you want to do in me to initiate some just do it mentality in some other people? What are some things in your businesses? Man, I want to experience another level every year. I don't want the same excuses to haunt me every day. I don't want the same excuses to haunt me every year. But you know who gets to decide that is me. 
and the same per and, and you get to decide what excuses or what obstacles or what lies of the enemy you're gonna choose to confront. Church, God's taken us to another level. He wants to take this church to another level. He wants to take our outreach department to another level. He wants to take our Bible college to another level. He wants to take your family to another level. He wants to take your education to another level. He wants to take your business to another level. But I believe in Him taking you to another level. There's some things that He's asking you to do to just say yes and do it. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna feel all 100% bold and 100% confident in that. God spoke to me, he said, Ashley, if you didn't feel weak at times, you would never experience my strength. Because in his word, it says in our weaknesses, his strengths are made perfect. So acknowledging that I cannot do it, what does it do? If I know the love of God, acknowledge I can do it, it doesn't say, I'm just gonna walk away, I can't do it. No. Acknowledging that I can't do it, knowing the love of God says, you know what, God, I cannot do it alone, but greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Whatever fear, whatever obstacle I'm facing, because you live on the inside of me, I can do it. I'm gonna ask all of you guys to stand up in this place. Again, like I said, some of you guys don't know or, or some of you guys, uh, you have some specific things that God's spoken to you about, or maybe some goals or some accomplishments that, that you wanna accomplish. And some of you guys have honestly forgotten about it. And tonight you need to dig it up. You need to dig up, God, what are you speaking? What are you saying to me? What are I needing to do that's actually gonna breathe life and breathe movement and help me finish strong this year? And God's strength is here. And I'm gonna ask Paul to come on up. But God's strength is here to meet you right where you're at. And like I said, don't allow, God's, God loves you no matter what, no matter what you're walking through, no matter what you haven't done or what you have done, God loves you no matter what. But when we truly experience the love of God, we no longer let it just be an excuse to stay where we're at but we allow God's love to be an empowerment to where we need to go and where we need to be. And I want, I want Paul to just lead us in a prayer and a time of decision. I believe that God wants to bring some things up to our forefront and to speak and remind us of some things. And as he reminds us of those things, that he's also reminding us that he's equipped us and that he's empowered us and that we have what it takes to finish strong this 2016. Amen. Come on. Y'all receive that, church.